Okay, so I've got things all set up here now on my end. Um, so yeah, if when you guys are able to couple um, what Kasami said, everything she said, with kind of the the technical aspects of squat leading, um, like you you're gonna be all entirely set. Um, and basically, what I'm gonna do is just explain the very basics of what you can do um, when you're leading, um, especially if you're just leading like a single squad and you have to make plans and stuff to just kind of get you in uh, the the details you need to know to to get people where they need to go and um, use all of your tools effectively. So we have um, a couple of tools at our disposal and if you guys want to actually open up your map screens for a second I'm going to demonstrate a couple of things. Many of you will already know this but uh, I want to cover it anyway, especially because I'm recording, so anyone who watches this will get a lot out of it. When you're squad leading, you will have, um, at minimum, five waypoints, and um, you will also have waypoints in smokes and things if you guys sort out those, and like Asami said, highly, highly recommend you do. They're universal leading tools um, for smoking things like Sundays and stuff, so absolutely get them. But you have the squad um, squad waypoint, which is, you guys can see the Bravo star over there, and then you guys have your fire team waypoints. And you as a squad lead um, will mostly use your squad waypoint, mostly, um, and then your fire team waypoints depending on how um, how try hard you want to be, how much you really want to um, point things out to your squad that can't or, or shouldn't be done with smokes. Um, so if you're, like, especially if you don't want to clutter the map, something I do a lot is, um, like, for instance, actually going back to Indercom was the base we talked about before, um, or referenced. There's a spot on that base where you can be very much in cover on a balcony um, and still technically be capturing the point. And to explain to my people, um, you know, that that's a really good good place to be, especially to start the cap, I'll just put my, my diamonds waypoint on that so that it's not cluttering the map for the platoon lead, it's not cluttering the map for anyone else um, who isn't going to know what I'm talking about, um, because those the fire team waypoints aren't visible to anybody um, but whoever's in your squad. So that's, that's something I personally use the fire team waypoints for, um, but most generally you'll be using the squad waypoints just to um, direct your squad where you want them to go and uh, it helps your platoon lead know where you're going if you happen to be the one to put that squad waypoint down. Most PLs will just use all the squad waypoints themselves though um, and you don't have to worry so much about that. So that's waypoint. And then yeah, so talking about smokes for a second, I'm actually not sure if smokes are going to show up here in VR training. They do! Wonderful. Okay, so we have the orange, green, purple, and yellow smokes, which you guys can also see on your maps. And in order to cert those out, each smoke is going to be 50 certs. So 50 um, for a total of 200 if you max all of them out. Um, and like we said, that's just pretty much universal across all outfits, across all factions, just to indicate Sundays, routers, beacons, um, and just any kind of spawn, really. It's very, very useful um, when you're leading a squad, uh, especially for your platoon lead, and you put a smoke down and you say, you know, hey PL, I spotted, or, or one of my squad members um, spotted a Sunday at Orange Smoke, um, and then the PL can go on to say, you know, how they want to deal with it, um, or, you know, if you happen to be next to it with your with your squad, you can say, hey, we discovered a Sunday, we're going to go take care of it for you, um, and then it, it's all about supporting your PL, right? So. Anything that you tell your PL that you can take care of, um, so much the better. It just it really lifts uh, the pressure off the PL. So telling them there's a, a Sunday here that we found, and uh, you know if you can, if it's relevant, we're gonna take care of it. So that smokes. Um, yep, I see the offense defense requests on there. Um, those are something you buy together or sort out together um, for another 200 certs. So it's it's a little bit pricey to get out everything, but um, once you have everything it's really nice, so altogether that's um, 400 certs, um, so a little less than half a gun. Um, and then yeah, for the offense and defense requests, uh, what they do is they can influence the spawn limitations, um, 
which we might cover in another training at some point, but just know for now that uh, every hex has, uh, it only lets so many people spawn into it um, from outside the hex. So if you're redeploying uh, from one base to another, you need to watch out and make sure that there's not already too many people inside that hex because you might not be able to spawn directly into it. You might have to come at it with uh, Sundays from the previous base or something like that. Um, but what these That's requests why do. Being up are so important. I'm sorry? That's why beacons being up are so important. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, good point. So, yeah, these, these offense and defense requests influence that. They make that uh, population restriction a little bit higher. Um, and it's really nice when you want to try and invite uh, other blueberries from other hexes to come and join in the fight, maybe get a bit of an edge on the uh, on your opponent's population. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's offense and defense requests. There's really no difference between the two. You can put a defense request on a base that you're attacking. Um, it does the same thing, but uh, they're both there anyway. So you can you guys can put them both on a single base, and uh, it's, it's just double it. So you have two there to do whatever you want to do, essentially. Two things that do the same thing. Um, so yeah, talking about beacons very quickly. Beacons are your gateway to spawning your whole squad in. Um, if anyone wants to see what a squad beacon doesn't or does look like rather if you've never seen one before um ack i can't actually put deploy them in in uh vr training oh well yeah um, i was just about to tell you that <laughs> um but they're the big beams that you see going up into the sky and uh they correspond um to your squad so only your squad can deploy on them that's why when the pl says you know hey can I get uh, um, you know beacons up for all squads? They're looking for four, one from each squad. And the uh, unfortunate bit, but something that matters to say, is that beacons um, there can only be one in a squad. Which means if you know or you know if you have one beacon already up in your squad, um, placing another one while that beacon is already active will replace it. Um, so usually best to either check first and see if there's a beacon already up, and if you can't find one or aren't sure, then definitely ask your squad lead um, or your squad in general to ask if putting a new beacon up would be useful. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly, yeah, el el elemental. Um, what else was I going to say about beacon? Oh, right, so yeah, another important tip um, for beacons is... Uh, as we've, I've been referring to them the whole time, beacons are up when placed and down when they are destroyed um, to avoid the Love double negative. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it takes a bit of uh, practice because you can place them down and they are also down when destroyed, right? At least is the uh, most people's um, you know thinking of it when they, when they first start placing beacons. But just for, uh, like I said, to avoid that double negative we place beacons, and they are up when they are placed, and they are down when they are dead or destroyed. Um, it's just our convention, and it's easier to stick with it than doing anything else. Um, so definitely try and practice that, because it helps so much, um, especially for squad leads who are pretty sure that we didn't have a beacon yet, and you said, beacon down. And then the question becomes, okay, but is it placed or is it dead? <laughs> um, so the more you get that practice in with, with using that convention, uh, the better it is. One thing I would like to add with the beacons is you're going to hear a lot of people say, bacon or bacon's crispy. Bacon crispy obviously equates to it's broken. Exactly. Oh. oh, wait, I thought bacon crispy is uh, it's up. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, that's what I thought. Crispy. This is, this this is, is, is the have... exact reason why we recommend saying up when you place a beacon, because then people aren't wondering in their heads this exact conversation that's going on. Does that mean that it's there? Can I use it? Does it mean we need one? Do I need to run outside the door here and possibly get killed to get a beacon up? It just eliminates a lot of confusion if you keep it simple to beacon up. It means I placed a beacon, and if you're out of this hex and you see we don't have a beacon, alpha beacon's down, can we get another one? Just keeps it short and simple, so people aren't having this conversation in their heads, wondering what the hell's going on. If you want to circumvent the entire conversation, like you know, 
If you want to circumvent the entire conversation, what a lot of the perk squads actually do is they say Isari has beacon or player name has beacon to actually. Usually, what I get is pretty much circumvents the entire conversation. Usually, what I get nobody does. Usually, what I get is beacons in a fantastic spot, and if you replace it, I'll personally kill you. Yeah. So basically, guys, like uh, beacons crispy, and. Um, you know, terminology like that was used, um, and is still used in in a lot of outfits, um, and it was very prevalent a while back in Planet Side history. Um, and the only thing about it, though, is when we use terms like that, it's very um, like you have to kind of know what it means. If you're just coming into the game and you hear "bacon's crispy," what on earth does that mean to a new player? <laughs> um, and so. Following, kind of following in in Scale's idea of being the, um, you know, we try to have get people a really nice new player experience. We try and avoid as, as many um, uh, in outfit terms that would need to be explained as much as possible. Um, so just using really really simple stuff like beacon up or beacon down is best. But like Bjorn said, sometimes you will still hear people saying uh, beacon crispy if that's what they're used to, um, and that's when they're what they're talking about. So that's that's beacons. Um, oh right, and so what got me started thinking about beacons is we were talking about um, not being able to get into a hex if the population is too high. And the nice thing about beacons is that it overrides all of that. So if you happen to be, um, even if you're not squad leading, but especially if you're squad leading, if you happen to be uh, the first one into a new hex or a new base um, ahead of your squad, uh, absolutely put that beacon up because it will uh, make it much easier for your squad to get in there. Just drop the beacon, not have to worry about bringing Sundays in to an overpopulated hex or something like that. And uh, everybody's very grateful seeing that. Um, so definitely, definitely when, when PL calls for beacons, uh, definitely either look to be the one to place it or um, watch and see when somebody else places it so that we don't have uh, too many that are going up at once. It will come up in your chat up in the left hand corner if somebody places a beacon in your squad only. Like if you're an alpha, you're not going to see Bravo's beacon placed, but if you see somebody in your squad up in the chat places a beacon, that's just for your squad only, so you'll know you don't need to place it. Unless they put it in a bad spot, then get it in a better spot. Absolutely. And there'll be a sound as well, right? What is a good spot for a beacon? Roof. Good question. Yep, roofs. Generally, I try and put beacons up high, far away, like on the tech plants, the legs like behind are good, and on those little things that go out. Um, somewhere close to the point where it's easy to access, you're right there, games. Um, and also, I put it on the opposite side of a building from their spawn from the points. Spawn. Yeah. From their spawn room or a satellite spawn, I put it so as soon as they walk out of there, they aren't seeing a friendly beacon. Try and put it on the opposite side of a building where you can get either on the roof or close to where the point is, because you can steer a little bit when you're coming down in a beacon. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, like, where I was going there, actually before, guys, to show you what beacons were like, down on the ground, that's that's not a good place for a beacon. Um, enemies can see that very well, and the more accessible a beacon is, the more they will want to kill it. Um, and so especially... Especially when you're the first one on a point, try and place it somewhere where it's not going to get killed immediately um, because you don't have backup yet and uh, you really need that beacon to be up as long as possible. So yeah, on a roof or somewhere, think like this, if, if the only class that can get to it uh, easily is a light assault, it's a good spot. <laughs> that's, that's kind of how I think of it. So somewhere high, especially if you're a light assault, then it's easy to get a beacon up somewhere where it's useful. So on a roof or in a quarter somewhere, uh, beside, beside a high up, uh, high up wall. Um, so the more concealed the beacon and its its beam are, the better. Or the tower yeah. beacons are pretty fun too. You can also place a beacon and tell your squad, you know, alpha beacon alpha beacons up, but it's dirty. Can somebody replace it when they come in? And somebody takes that beacon and they can steer a little bit, maybe get it on the roof of the point or on the roof of a building close to it where it's a little more inaccessible to the enemy. Yep, so that, that that would probably be the only time you place it on the ground is when you intend for it to be replaced almost immediately. Um, the other thing I want to point out is that beacons have cooldowns. 
which means if you are wanting to uh, make the most out of your beacons, you want to kind of keep in mind uh, when you place your beacon, because I, I think it's a five five minute timer, maybe four minute timer, uh, before beacons can be placed again by the same person. So if you just placed your beacon and you know, you know, you placed your beacon and it died and you need another one right now, um, you can ask in your squad, uh, and it's, it's usually best to call out by name instead of just, can somebody replace it? Um, so there's a tidbit there, but I don't know. Uh, Slim, can I get you another, put another beacon up? My, one, uh, my beacon's on cooldown. Um, and so Slim would go over and place his, and now, now we have two pe people on cooldown, but mine is closer, and so I can think ahead and go, okay, so whose beacons have I asked to place beacons already? Um, so who's on cooldown and who can I ask to place them later? Um, because there's no nothing worse than everybody having placed beacons, but you aren't sure who's placed them, and, and you're wondering, why don't we have any beacons? And it's probably because um, most people's beacons are on cooldown, so just something to think about and keep in mind. Um, and then I think the very last note I want to make here, guys, is uh, especially when you are leading single squads, when you're just running a squad of your own, not part of any platoon, um, is that, you know, people join you and they want to have fun. Um, what people don't like is being in fights where they're the ones getting killed 100% of the time and not doing anything themselves. Um, and a good note that you can think for yourself. Uh, try, try and hold the, uh, the guns off, guys. I am recording, so it just makes it easier uh, to post, post later. Um, but, yeah, so good, good reminder to, to kind of um, make it clear to yourself, is this a good fight? Um, are people appreciating this one? Is if you are. If you're not having fun at a fight, it's very, very likely that no one else is either. Um, and that's, that's a question I get a lot, is how do I know when I'm doing a good job as a squad leader or platoon lead? Um, and aside from the pressure of actually leading, if you just kind of imagine yourself being one of the people playing um, without being in a leadership position, would you be having fun right now? Is this a good fight? Um, most people will care more about the good fights than winning the actual alert anyway. Um, so definitely look for good fights, look for good farms, and uh, you won't have a problem giving people a good time. And kind of along with that is um, be calm. Um, there are things you can do to influence people having a good time, both good and bad. If you're having a bad time, um, either in-game or you're coming in from uh, a bad day yourself or whatever, um, and you are yelling at people or you are um, just kind of rushing things very hard. Like that's that's not going to give people a good time. I don't I don't care if you win the alert because of it. Like no, nobody's going to feel good about that win. Um, on the other hand, if you are encouraging and you set your expectations right um, of people and of the alert, if the alert is something you're going for, um, people are going to have a good time no matter what. I mean, I've I've been in a few platoons, um, especially early on and this is kind of what started uh, me on leading, is seeing PLs who would lead um, so good that even though we lost the alert, like, I had fun. I was so proud of what we did. Um, and that, that again, like Asami was saying, is what kept me coming back. It didn't matter whether or not we won. It just was really, really fun. We all had fun as a group, and uh, we worked as a team. And I think... That brings me to my last point very well, which is other people. If there are other people in your squad who, um, especially in uh, conjunction with running a platoon, if you see someone who's giving your PL a really hard time, maybe they're backseat PLing or uh, backseating you and you know saying, uh, we should go here and getting mad when, when the PL suggests something else or explains why they're doing this other thing, um, like, there is absolutely no shame in uh, kicking people for, for doing stuff like that. Um, give them a warning, you know, say, hey man, like, I, I appreciate that you're, um, you know, depending on what they're doing, maybe they're backseating, so you can say, I appreciate that you're trying to help, but, you know, the PL has everything in hand, or I have everything in hand, and um, I appreciate your suggestions, but this is what we're doing, and I really do- oops, sorry. <laughs> um, 
and this is something that we're doing, and uh, we need to make decisions uh, quickly. And then uh, if they keep going after that and they just will not stop, then you know they've gotten their warning, and you can kick them and not feel bad about that, because the, the whole point of leading is to give people a good time. And if that means removing people who are uh, being a detriment to that, then you should absolutely kick those people. Um, but a warning absolutely is, is warranted, so make sure you guys do that. So that was um, everything I had to say there, and if anybody has any questions on anything I said or anything Kasami said, uh, now's the time. And Kasami, if you wouldn't mind just watching the, uh, the platoon chat, just because I usually keep mine off while I'm recording. Yeah, yeah. I'll just say this is way more organized than the fucking Terran or Newton Bomber, as far as I can see. Of course. Thank you. Frag out! You should uh, see our Discord. I'm mainly no. a nanite systems user, that's the thing. Medic here, let me take a look. There's been some pretty fun NC outfits, I'll say that. Yeah, so actually this is probably a good time, um, if I can get one of my people on the Discord to bring that Let Discord link it. in. Um, you guys can see trainings like this that we do all the time. We have our Orbital Strike news, where you can see our weekly schedule. Um, that does include trainings, we have events that go on. Um, so if you guys want to be a part of that, definitely join the Discord. We have people from SKL, we have people from other outfits, we have people from other factions on there. Um, and we, we really great, like growing our game. Plate planet side. Yeah, absolutely. We have, uh, we have quite a few other games on there as well that we do. Um, so definitely join and check it out because uh, it's really, really nice. We love growing our community like that. New world. Yep. Feeling all my friends. Nobody has any questions? It is that good of a teacher. <laughs> good job, Kasami. God damn. I'm, I'm Mommy Kasami, I have to ask these things. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, well if there's no questions everybody, then thank you very much. We have a late night training that's going to be happening tomorrow um, with Prozan. I plan to do a couple more squad lead trainings um, probably in the, in the next couple weeks as well, so keep an eye on out for that in uh, the Orbital Strike News, the OSN like I mentioned, and uh, I will see you guys all later. Thank you very, very much for coming. Thanks, Horace.